Myanmar's military airstrikes have killed dozens of civilians since launching a coup last year. Victims include school children and families killed while sleeping in their homes. But how is an increasingly isolated military, condemned around the world, getting jet fuel? To find out, we looked through leaked documents, satellite images and vessel tracking data. We spoke to defectors of the Myanmar Air Force and sources close to energy companies. And we bring you the most complete picture to date of how international corporations have played a part in supplying aviation fuel to Myanmar. Myanmar's fuel is mostly, if not entirely, imported. It is transported through ports and storage facilities before making its way to civilian airports and military bases. At the center of the story is the company Puma Energy and its Myanmar affiliates, which have played a role in almost every step of the supply chain. At the port, where jet fuel first arrives by ship from across Asia, a company wholly owned by Puma Energy handles the fuel on arrival. Another local company, paid by Puma's affiliate, then transports fuel to storage facilities and air bases across Myanmar. Using satellite imagery, leaked company invoices and spreadsheets of truck deliveries shared exclusively with Amnesty International, we were able to track fuel delivery to 20 storage facilities at commercial airports and military air bases. Through sources on the ground and interviews with Air Force defectors, we then linked four of these air bases to airstrikes that amount to war crimes. One of these air bases is used for attacks on Guyan State, where in February this year, a farmer's house was bombed in the middle of the night, killing the husband and wife of the family in their sleep. But Puma is not alone. At the port of entry, we tracked shipments of fuel that were offloaded and confirmed four of the suppliers. Vessel tracking data implicates a fifth one. Companies say that these shipments complied with sanction laws. They also explained that the fuel was for civilian purposes. But in reality, this is not always the case. Even if it is the intention, the risk of diversion to the military is very high. Leaked letters revealed that two shipments of fuel went to the Myanmar Air Force. In September this year, we presented our evidence to companies involved. Ten days later, Puma Energy announced they would leave the country and sell its business. It admitted that its Myanmar affiliate could not stop fuel from being diverted to the Myanmar Air Force. In response to our findings, Thai Oil told us they are pausing aviation fuel shipments. And Willemsen, a shipping agent, told us it will no longer provide such services to vessels transporting aviation fuel into Myanmar. Any other company considering selling, shipping, financing, trading or distributing aviation fuel to Myanmar risk being linked to crimes committed by its military. If we want to stop airstrikes that are killing civilians, let's cut off the military's access to fuel and ground its aircraft.